Hey, welcome back everybody. This video, we're actually going to do something pretty cool. We're going to make a guessing game where you have to guess a randomly generated number. It's gonna be pretty fun, I'm pretty excited, so hopefully you guys are looking forward to it. Before we get started, I'd encourage you guys to check out our sponsor. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so where do we even get started with this application? Well, first, this is kind of built off of a menu from earlier. So basically, when you run this application, you get asked if you want to quit the game or if you want to play the game. You could expand this menu to add different games or different options, and that's totally up to you. Right now, when you click play game, all it does is say, yo, let's play. But in theory, we could just replace this output with the actual game functionality. Now, when you're going to do some kind of big piece like that, you might want to consider breaking that out into its own function so you don't pollute your code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say play game, and there you go. Our game is complete, and that's all you got to do. Not quite. You actually have to implement this function. So up above main, what we're going to do is we're going to say void play game. Now, this is our function, and in here we can do an output just to make sure everything's wired up and it's good to go. All right, so here's what's going to happen. The person selects play game, it jumps down here to case one, the play game function is called, this is outputted, and then once this function is done, it's going to do the break. So let's just give it a try, make sure it's working, compile and run, and we play the game, it says game is being played. Cool, so the function is set up, all we have to do now is actually make the game do something. <laughs> so we're going to need a random number, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that, but first you might wanna include a couple things here. First thing is we're going to include C standard library, and we're also going to include C time. Now I think in this situation, the includes are unnecessary because I think they're being included from one of these other files, but it never hurts to have them there. And if you're ever gonna be working with random numbers by themselves, you'll definitely wanna make sure you include C standard library and C time. Now to generate a random number, we're going to create a variable. We're gonna call it random, and we're gonna set this equal to a function call. So this function call will return a random number. Now, you can make a random number within a certain range by using the magical modulus operator. So basically, we're going to divide by some number, and whatever the remainder is, is going to be the random number. Let's go somewhere, maybe 250. So in order to do it 0 to 250, you actually need to divide by 251 to get that remainder. So when we do division by 251 and get the remainder, the remainder is going to be somewhere from 0 to 250. It'll never be 251 because that means there wouldn't be a remainder because that would be a perfect division. Because if you divide by 251, there will never be a remainder of 251. So this should give us a random number, but there's one thing about this, and that is it's going to give us the same sequence of random numbers. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about random numbers, I have a video on my C programming tutorial series. It's, I think, number 50, where I talk about a similar thing where we create a guessing game like this. But Crash Course version, when you create a random number, it's going to give you the same sequence every time. And to fix that, we need to seed our random number, which is basically changing the input of this random number generation. So to do that, inside a main, we're going to call a function srand, and we're going to pass in a function call to time. And then inside of the time function, we're going to pass null. So this srand is going to seed our random number once when the application starts. We only need to do this once, so we don't need to put it inside a play game. The number passed into srand is known as the seed, and it's going to change every single time we run this application because this is getting the number from the system clock. And the clock time on your computer is always changing. So this is the perfect way to generate a random number. Now granted, it's not perfect, but if you're just playing a stupid little game, it works perfectly fine. Don't use this simple method for crazy encryption or anything like that. This is just for fun. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to output that random number. There we go. And compile and run. And each time we play this game, we get a different number somewhere between 0 and 250. Right now we got 204, 65, and so forth. If we quit and play again, 
meaning you actually exit out of the application and run the application again. When you play a game, you're going to get a different starting number, so there's no repetitive sequence. Now, just as a reminder, to get out of a never-ending loop, or basically to exit the application, you can hold Control and press C. So we got the random number, now we need to create some logic to see if the person can guess it. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell the person to guess a number, and then we're going to have an indefinite loop, which is basically a loop that will go on forever until we make it stop by breaking out of it. So to do this, we can say while true, and then inside of this loop, we can get the input and see if it's correct. So this is gonna come from C in, and it's going to be stored in a variable. We can just call it guess. Store this input into guess, and now we can do an if statement. We'll start with the structure. It's gonna look like that. And then we'll just say if guess is equal to random, which means they got the guess correctly, what we can do is we could say you win. Now we have the option to say else you lose, or we could do an else if and say, oh, the number was too low or the number was too high. That's going to be cooler, so let's do that. We're going to say else. Then we need a new comparison, so we're going to say guess is less than random. And in here we're going to output too low. And then else will catch everything else, which means it's too high. Awesome. So that should work. Now the only thing is we need to break out of this while loop, because right now it's just going to go forever, right? Because it says while true, which is always true, and there's nothing breaking out of the loop. So when should we break out of this? Well, if the person wins, of course, we want it to keep going until they get it correct. So in this case, we could say break. So let's give it a try, make sure we got everything working right. And we have an issue. We need to say else if. Sorry, guys. Now we can compile and run. Play game. Now we have the output telling us exactly what the number is. That's more for our testing sake, not going to be there in the official application. But you know, it's hard to actually guess a number out of 250. So we'll start with printing it out. So we say 180, it says too low, we say 185, too high. And then maybe somewhere right in the middle, 183, you win.